Do you want to start a business to give your family more freedom? Do you desire to have a marriage that makes your friends jealous? Do you want to spend more quality time with your children? We are your hosts, Matt and Jocelyn Woodruff, and we cannot wait to share this journey with you. Welcome to our family-friendly podcast. Join our conversations where we talk about how to build a business that will give us the freedom we choose. Welcome to the Family Life Movement Podcast. Let's switch gears here for a little bit. And in case you guys hear anything, Family Life Movement, you know that we love having our kids on the podcast with us. We've got Naya, our 20-month-old. 22 months. 22 months, excuse me. So I, Naya, if she decides to talk, she's saying hi, giving you guys a shout out. And we love having our kids uh, to where they can make a special appearance on the show. So, Stacey, business owners are definitely feeling the effects of these trying times. You know, oh, yeah. Got businesses that are shut down, businesses that are, you know, what do we do? Uh, you know, businesses who have filed bankruptcy and different things like that. Uh, so, when somebody has to wear the different hats in their business, mm-hmm. it can stress people out. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's any secret. So what are some of the key stress points that business owners are currently dealing with today? You know, the, the stress is, is just the responsibility of, you know, you have to make sure that your, your um, employees are safe. You need to make sure when you do go back to work that they're going to have a safe environment, a clean environment. Are they going to be tech- protected from viruses? You also have to, you know, they have, you know, all these things cost money. You know, are, where are the owners of these businesses getting the money? They haven't been working for the past month and a half or so you know, and, you know, business has been taking a toll, you know, restaurants, you know, um, so many different places, you know, um, you have, you know, doctor's offices that are afraid to see patients because, you know, they're one-on-one contact. We have dentist offices all over the place shutting down right now. Some of them don't even know when they're going to, you know, when they're going to uh, come back up, you know, and, uh, We have so many people right now just struggling, you know, and uh, you really have to, you know, people who are, you know, in charge of everything and and wear several hats, they have to learn how to take some quality time for themselves. I always suggest to like, you know, when you, when either early in the morning or later in the day, whenever you feel you're up to it, you know, a little exercise to get the, get those frustrations out, to get, you know, to get that unnecessary, you know, those unnecessary emotions built built inside, get them out. You know, um, exercise is very good for you. Yoga is really good for you. You know, the stretching and just the movement and the circulation, you know, and the clarity of mind, you know, that's another way to help yourself. And, you know, it's easier said than done, but I always say, try to see if you can leave your job at home. I mean, at work and come home. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And come home and not have that job with you, you know, like, you know, shut the phone off. But that's sometimes that can happen for many business owners, because a lot of times I see many business owners, the phone is consistently ringing when they're home, you know, because people are calling them, what should I do next? What's going on? I don't know. And what, 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 but you know, somehow you have to give yourself quality time. Everybody needs quality time. And if you don't have that quality time, you're going to end up falling apart. You know, and then what good are you going to be to everybody else? So you have to figure out ways to make yourself feel good and to to help yourself mentally and physically and spiritually. Absolutely love that. Yeah, that's great. Um, I I like that you're looking at it from like a a, um, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole picture. It's more than just about having income. (laughs) Yeah, 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 definitely. One hundred percent. So what are some morning and evening habits and routines that you've implemented to help you and and maybe your husband and maybe your kids and you're encouraging them to take on these new habits in the morning or the evening uh, to keep yourself from getting stressed out? You shared with us a little earlier that you were slightly under the weather and that can really get under your skin and stress to more stuff and, and more chaos. So what are some morning and evening routines that you've implemented and why? 
you know, I, I think really good things to do is like to try to implement some yoga. They have yoga poses that you can do in the morning to give yourself energy, to make yourself focus. They have stuff at night, different poses that you can do and different stretches to help you go to bed that will make you a little bit on the tired side. Um, you know, uh, a great clarity of mind, a little meditation in the morning is, is really great because it gives you a, a clear focus. You, you tend to think about things in a different manner than you would beforehand. If you, you know, if you live where you can go outside for a few minutes, you know, go outside, get some fresh air, take a couple of deep breaths, have a cup of coffee or, you know, a cup of tea outside in the morning and just, you know, and just, you know, look at the beauty outside and, and just give yourself some time to just refresh yourself and renew yourself. You know, um, you know, these are things that could actually, you know, help you. And, uh, you know, um, I've, I've, I do them and it is very helpful, you know, but I have to say sometimes you know you you find yourself on um, putting yourself uh, you get you slack you know sometimes you're doing so good for so long and then you tend to see yourself slacking so you have to really try not to, to slack and try to be consistent because you know the more you're consistent the more it becomes routine and part of your lifestyle it's when you're not consistent you know then it becomes more of a struggle you know to do those things yeah, I, I, I really identify with that slacking. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I'll be really consistent for a little while and then like something will interrupt my routine, mm -hmm. whether it's illness in myself or one of the kids or something happens at work that's just unexpected or something like that. And then it's just getting back into that is so hard for me. Oh yeah. <laughs> you and everybody else. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm sure I'm not the only one in the world. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's really hard. So you, you know, and even making a journal, a lot of people like to make a journal. They like to share how they're feeling on paper. And for people who aren't, you know, really good about, you know, sharing their emotions and they're not good with, you know, opening up to others, you know, a journal is a great thing too just, you know, at nighttime, you know, write in a journal, you know, write a paragraph or so. And you'd be surprised how that feels just to get it out on paper. I like that. So what would be a good way to, you know, somebody's listening to this right now and they're going, wow, you know, I've never been that great at journaling, but I think it's a great idea. Where would somebody start? Would you start with, you know, like maybe a gratitude journal or would you start with a, here's how I feel today? Or where would you start with that? You know, it's, it's whatever makes you comfortable. Like, you know, people, you could just use a regular notebook, just a, like a school notebook if you want. You know, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's how fancy you want to go. You know, um, you really, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy at all. You could just, you know, you can just date it and, and, and just start writing, you know. Um, things like that, you know, can be really helpful. Excuse me. Bless you. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, so what are some ways that we can build ourselves up so that um, our business can really take off a little bit? What, is there anything that you could think of? I think, you know, little by little each day, you take one day at a time and you have to set goals. You have to start and, and create goals and create strategies. You know, we may not know exactly what's ahead, but if we set some, you know, short-term and long-term goals and they're productive and long-term and short-term goals that we know that we could probably accomplish that will make the road and the journey a little bit easier, we should start doing them. You know, if you know that you're going to be going to work in the next couple of weeks, you know, you want to do whatever you can to help your employees employees and to help yourself and you know how are you going to set that that office or how are you going to set that that you know that that restaurant or pizzeria you know what are you going to do to to help the people who come in there to purchase it what are you going to do for the employees and what are you going to do for yourself how can you you know you know, you have to figure out ways and strategies of how you could actually bring in, you know, productive income with, you know, maybe not seeing as many people as you normally do. And I absolutely love that. I think there's just a lot of people who are focused so much on the negative mm -hmm. instead of using this as an opportunity or as a friend and mentor of mine says, what does this make possible? Mm -hmm. There's so many people who forget to ask that question. Yeah. yeah I love it because, you know, during this time, we can use the opportunity to get closer to our family, to get closer to our spouses, to get closer, to learn a new language, to learn a new skill, to make ourselves more marketable, you know, especially if you're a business. Right. So, you know, other than the, the routines and uh, yoga, what are some other ways that business owners can deal with stress 
so that they can get through this time so that they're not just sitting here and worry and panic and going, holy cow, my business is going down the tubes. Uh, like what are some things that they can do to, to specifically deal with the stress? You know, I think communicating with other owners and, and other people is really good. I think this is a time to reach out to others in your industry and in your field and find out what they're doing. Learn from each other. You know, this is, could be a learning experience and you can learn things that you never learned before that you didn't know or you didn't realize that people are sharing with you. You know, these are some things that you could actually, you know, um, you can actually, it could help you grow in a sense. You know, once this is over, you know, all these different things that you can learn and and read about and and you know talk and communicate with others about could actually help you progress and and become a better per person a better business person and and help you you know and even with um with uh you know stress and anxiety you know like little supplements like uh passion flower or you know or just little you know lavender on your wrists you know the smell of lavender you know relaxes a lot of people you could do little things like that to to calm yourself down too yeah, i know there's a lot of people who use you know different things like essential oils and having that lavender having i think i believe peppermint's another one of those that as mm -hmm. you go and it, you know, it gets into your brain, your brain absorbs it and it, you know, ends up reacting like a, a stimuli, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like what we were talking about last podcast about not being able to get out and go outside and different things. And so using those natural, you know, oils, essential oils and, and different things like that, that can uh, really just kind of relax you. Uh, I, I like the lavender, the one that uh, you brought up. I know that's one that is, I've got several friends that use it and it's one of their favorites. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like either love it or hate it. It's like, I didn't realize, but there, it's like 50, 50 out there. Like, you know, you know, a lot of people hate it and a lot of people love it. I happen to love it, but you know, it's, uh, so what are some other natural remedies that people and families can use that would bring that peace and that calmness uh, to families that would help de-stress people. You know, I, I, I think, you know, doing like, like we mentioned, like, you know, um, just together, you know, doing, doing things as a group, as a one party, you know, and just having fun together and, you know, sharing events together in your home, you know, like either cooking or, you know, helping each other or just, you know, doing chores around the house, but doing them as one big group. And you end up, you know, just laughing and having a good time with each other because you're in each other's presence. These are ways that you could actually, you know, you know, you can actually help each other, you know. <laughs> Sorry, their 20-month-old is being funny. That's um, okay. <laughs> uh, so how can our businesses excel because of the pandemic? Do you have any? I know we don't want to necessarily focus on this being a moneymaker time, um, but is there any strategies that you can think of? Um, I think that, you know, a lot of people have been, you know, focusing on different ways to protect society now. So they're taking a, a move where we weren't really thinking about, you know, the, um, the, uh, the uh, craziness and, and what germs could actually do to us. And, you know, and people are now starting to take washing your hands more seriously. They're starting to take, you know, wearing gloves and masks and, and being, you know, cleaner, you know, around the house, you know, um, you know, using disinfectant. And, and worrying more about, you know, how, you know, how cl clean your inside is and even your outside and thinking about germs more, you know, um, it, it might, and in a sense, you know, if it doesn't make you OCD, it, it'll make you actually, you know, look at things in a, in a better respect where you actually, you know, take care of yourself better. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely seeing a lot of businesses that are still open talking about no contact or we're trying to make our delivery services safer for you. Yeah. yeah that, that's something that I think people are going to want to hear from businesses in the future. I, I could be wrong on that. <laughs> no, I think so. I definitely do. I, I think it's going to take time for everything to get back to where it was. It's going to be a while before everything gets back to, to the way it was. People are going to be very scared and they're going to have a lot of fears and worries for a very long time. And, you know, we're going to have to just work with it and, and help each other, you know, and uh, eventually just like we got through everything else, we'll get through this. Yep. Yep. You know, I like one of the things that you said before, and that's coming together as a community, whether that's through Zoom, through, 
you know, hangouts, uh, through, you know, whatever that means is, but getting together in a community where you can, where you can get together, you can express yourself to where you're not, you, and you don't feel completely alone. Right. Time. And I think that that's definitely one of those things that, you know, can help, you know, not only our business, but our business, uh, business leadership, our leadership starts with us. Right. It starts with us individually. It starts with how, you know, you and your spouse are coping and the communication that you guys have going on, love languages and yes, how you're treating your kids and, and different things like that. So absolutely love that the great knowledge that you're dropping there. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so as we start wrapping up, who is an entrepreneur that you respect, uh, that you know personally, that you respect, what are they doing and how can we connect with them? Um... Let's see. Uh, you know, I, I've worked with a lot of different people and there's a lot of different entrepreneurs that I, I, I've grown to respect. And, um, you know, I, I, I really, um, you know, I, I really admire the people. I've come across a lot of doctors lately that, you know, I've really taken, you know, this, this virus seriously and, and their, their will to want to help others. And, uh, you know, um, I've just, you know, like even, even my husband, he's reached out to so many to help others. And I just think it's, uh, you know, um, I just, uh, I don't really have one person in particular, but you know, Jack Cranfield is, is a great author. And if you really want to hear some inspiring and motivational uplifts, you know, his books are, are amazing. And I, I would suggest um, he is a great um, person to, uh, to read upon. And, and even Guy Lakowski, he's, uh, he's actually a great entrepreneur and he, uh, he's, he started out from nothing and he worked his way up and he has great and inspiring stories to tell. And he's on the internet also. Awesome. We would definitely make sure that we put those in the show notes. Uh, you know, like I said before, this is family life movement. We're all about family. And yes, that is my 22 month old uh, screaming in the background. And <laughs> so Jocelyn is going and, and taking care of uh, and, and being an awesome, phenomenal mom. Uh, I think that that is something that um, as men, we don't give our wives near enough credit. So when she's listening to this later, Jocelyn, you're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so what are some of your favorite resources? I know you're in the you know, positive market. You're in the self-image market. You know, you're constantly you know, listening to podcasts, reading books and stuff like that. So what are some of your favorite resources? Um, you know, I, I love uh, Lulu.com. Lulu.com is uh, a great place where a lot of um, authors have published their own uh, works and they've come out with some really great um great uh um books and you know there i even have published just a few on on those myself and they're uh there it's a it's a great publishing company and then when you and you can actually uh find a lot of great authors there and uh you know i also you know, i was thinking when we were talking about stress and anxiety i was thinking about how you know so many people tend to lose their hair when it comes to stress and anxiety. And I was, you know, I've been working, at, you know, with this company called Hair Restoration Laboratory and they make, um, they make sh uh, natural hair shampoo, conditioner and hair ther serum to help um, regrow the hair um, that, you know, what people go through a terrible time when they start losing hair for whatever reason. And, you know, their, um, their shampoo and conditioners have helped many people uh, stimulate and open up the hair follicles and, and stimulate hair growth. And I really uh, like their stuff. I actually use it myself. And a lot of, I've actually gotten a lot of people on it um, because their, their stuff is just truly phenomenal. And they even have stuff to make your hair thicker and, uh, you know, ser serum that you just rub into your, your scalp. And uh, it, like I said, it works terrific. And I think, uh, you know, they've come, they came out with that product um, and, and it's just, uh, it's been doing an amazing job. And you can tell just by the testimonials they get all the time. 
And, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, there, I just love any, anything that, you know, a good story that, you know, that helps people, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, we, on our website, the complete herbal guide, we have, you know, tons of different experts that come on and share their, their stories and share, um, you know, their different expertise in the different areas. Um, you know, we do a lot of different, um, you know, fitness, we do, uh, natural healing. We talk about supplements. We talk about, you know, all the different things about beauty because a lot of you know a lot of people are interested in you know how to maintain their beauty especially when it comes to aging and getting older you know we try you know it's it's really hard you know you start getting a little self-conscious and you know there's you know we, we have like hundreds of different ways you know naturally how to keep your 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 beauty looking good and um we have lots of different healthy recipes too, because, you know, nowadays we're a go-go society. We're always on the rush and, you know, well, before we were confined, we were, and, you know, everybody was like, you know, it was just, it's just hard to like, you know, prepare meals. A lot of people don't prepare meals, you know, so we have a lot of different, you know, quick and easy, you know, healthy recipes, you know, for people to do. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of different exercises and strength exercises. And, um, you know, um, we have almost information about every condition and disorder and disease you can imagine and different natural ways to, to help improve it. So we, we have a lot on that website. We have thousands of articles and I just like to invite everybody to come over and to check it out. Great. Um, are there any um, specific ways that, um, besides the website, of course, uh, that people can come uh, connect with you and your mission? Yeah, you know, you can, I have a stacychalemi.com website. You can contact me there. I always have a lot of free books and a lot of free uh, eBooks that you can download about all different topics. And, you know, if you email me on the websites, you know, I'll be sure to answer back to you for sure. Great. Man, that's awesome. Stacey, you've been such a delight to talk to. I know I've <laughs> talked you. to you on my other podcast. Uh, and those episodes will be releasing. And not only that, but we'll have some of those episodes on the family life movement because there's just there, there's been some real goals, some real good nuggets of wisdom that uh, <laughs> people have been bringing. So thank you so much for being on the family life thank movement. Thank you so podcast. much. Thank, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for listening to the Family Life Movement Podcast. I hope you had as much fun as we did. To hear our thoughts on the podcast and to continue this conversation, join our free Facebook group by searching for the Family Life Movement. See the show notes for links to our guest social media and websites and any resources that were mentioned will also be linked in the show notes. Also, if you're enjoying the podcast, please go rate and review and send us a screenshot and we will send you a special access gift. Join us next time for more conversations, tips, and tricks on growing your business around your family. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.